welcome to the fireside today. Um, I'll go ahead and then t uh, leave it over to you, Michael, and to Hope to go ahead and ask the questions. Did you grow up as a soap opera viewer, and, and if so, which shows were your shows? Oh, yes, I did. I was very much a soap opera fan. Um, uh, I watched ABC, so I watched um, All My Children uh, and a little bit of Loving, but then All My Children, One Life to Live, and General Hospital. So that was kind of my lineup. And um, was it at One Life where you played Maggie uh, uh, Carpenter? I juggled. I juggled. You ju that's right, I you juggled. Yes, all kinds of juggling in daytime. It's um, great to make a cross-eyed girl try to juggle. It's really hard. That's funny. Um, True. <laughs> is that where you first met Hillary? Yes. Yeah. Cool. And were you familiar with her work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember being um, making, I was doing a film up in Shaver Lake, California, and the Emmys were on in this little local, you know, restaurant. And it was the year she won. And oh, nice. I didn't know her that well, but um, I was a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That was, that was a great moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell me about the Real Women's Network, how that came about, and what kind of content people can um, see when they go there. Um, it's it, Real Women's Network is um, a platform where women content creators, uh, strong producer presence, editor, uh, writers, um, directors uh, can come and, and showcase their talent. Uh, we really wanted to create a space where women's voices are the main focus. So that's what that's about. And you can just go to realwomensnetwork.com and uh, it's pretty easy to navigate like any of the other platforms out there and uh, see some really amazing independent work. Let's talk about Venice. Um, <laughs> your series, um, are, are there plans to get back to work with that? Absolutely. Um, I was I hoping to get something going in the spring of, of next year, but it's, you know, a little crazy with everything. So I probably will be next fall. That's my plan. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do a season seven and I'd love to do it um, in Los Angeles, if that's possible. And uh, yeah, just to bring, uh, bring us all back together for a very, rom it's just a very romantic honeymoonish uh, season. Do you plan to possibly address COVID-19? I think we have to explain the um, air kisses and um, yeah, just, you know, the, the plastic barrier in bed. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot. Of, I, we'll see where we are, right? But um, I, I don't know that I will or, or won't at this point. I just kind of want to see where we are next year. The last season of Beacon Hill, can you talk about um, what it was like uh, stepping behind as a director and, and directing some of your fellow actors? Sure. Um, I, I was directing uh, Venice uh, season five. Um, I've been trying to like do some scenes here and there just to see if I can do it and, um, and if I like it. And uh, yeah, so Hillary and I got behind the camera in season two of Beacon. Um, and I love these actors, you know, I just love, like, even the ones that I'd never worked with, with before, like Jacob Young. Mm. Um, I got to work with these amazing actors that I've been fans of for so long. Um, and it, it was just very easy to talk to them because I, I, I work in their shoes, you know, I, I know what it's like. And, and daytime actors are, uh, you just leave them alone and let them go. You can, you can plant a seed and, and, they're so well trained to get it done quickly and with fullness that you don't have to say much really it's it comes down to you know making sure the camera captures it are do you and hillary both direct the same episode we um the, the way we shoot it is we shoot um really by set so we might do different scenes um uh, from different shows. So we'll come in and work together, um, blocking movement. We'll work with the actors and then we both sit at the monitor and uh, she's got a great eye for um, just spatially where she can capture things that are going wrong and popping in. And, and so we don't waste a lot of time and we can go and do a pickup and um, 
and yeah, and I and I just I will go in and work with the actors, but so will she. So it, it but the, again, there's not a lot to do. These guys are like so good. Um, it really is about working with the crew and making sure they have time to uh, get what they need so they feel good about their day. Has, has that process become more expedited over the years of, of doing it with um, with with uh, web series? For me, yes, because I, I largely use a lot of the same crew or I, I use um, people who recommend great crew people that just have a, I know they get it the minute they walk on the set. A lot of independent filmmakers out there, uh, incredibly talented and crew people. And you can just tell them what you need and they get it done. Um, uh, with Beacon Hill, I worked with um, our friend and producer, Skip Shea, who's East Coast. and um he brought in his crew and so he had worked with them before on some horror flicks and stuff that he does which were really cool but uh so he had a confidence in them and that gave me a confidence but it's just really easy to they just know how to they move fast and then i flew some people in that i've worked i've done venice with and i did uh one million happy nows with and uh so that they know they know how fast it is and um and we can get it done really fast and, and not screw up the actors. You know, that's the other thing. You want to find a crew that, that are very, very respectful of what the acting process is because they had a ton of dialogue, um, just so much dialogue in a day. So if we had to roll back or if we had to go back to one or whatever we had to do, the crew was really efficient at getting us there quickly. Um, in the olden days on broadcast, soap operas, the, the storytelling was such that you had to invest for years before you might get a payoff. And the payoff could be a, a wedding, a confrontation, a fraternity reveal. Can you talk about the storytelling in web series where um, the seasons are shorter, the episodes aren't as long? How quickly, or how would you describe the pace of storytelling in uh, a web series? Well, it's, it's kind of a, um, a, little, like a little mini movie. So if we do like 20, uh, 20 minute episodes on average um, and you do nine episodes, it's 180 minutes. So it's like a, a movie um, broken down into parts. So it's, it really does have a beginning, middle and an end. And I think that's, it would be like telling one story on a soap opera that has, you, you see it beginning, it has its you know, peak and then it, it ends. Um, and you just try to pace it out so there's something interesting in, in each story throughout uh, the season, in each episode. Um, I, I look at it more as a little movie. Who were some of the um, writers that, that you acted for and worked with um, uh, when you, when you, from broadcast soaps who, whose work uh, inspired you? Could you, uh, could you actors? Uh, writers and directors. Writers and directors. Um, oh gosh. Um, I think every, every director I've ever worked with, uh, but you know, you look at the, the cream of the crop, you look at the Zimmers and the Robert Newmans and, um, uh, Erica Slezak and, you know, all these people that I grew up watching. Um, Hillary's one of those uh, amazing actresses. Um, I, I, you know, there are just so many people that I'm, I'm the, a giddy girl fan. I'm, I'm just like, I'm such, a, so in awe. When I joined When Life to Live, because I like love that show, I had a very hard time, you know, speaking to people. It was like, I really, I'm a big fan. So I, all of those actors, you know, and, and my Guiding Light friends who I, gosh, I mean, they just, you know, that's like, you get thrown into the, the cage, you know, you just have to kind of like, you know, duke your way through it because they're so amazing, those actors, but they raise you up, you know? And, um, and then I think every director, I have such an appreciation for uh, daytime directors as well and writers because you have to do things so fast. And, and, and as producers, you have to maintain that quality and it's really hard when you're, you're clicking it off like that. So, and we have to, a little more time. I mean, our days are packed, but we have a lot of time to plan. Right. It's different. Something that uh, I'm personally curious about is you've worn many hats over the years, and I'm just wondering which one you find most rewarding and most challenging. 
You know, it's changed. It, it used to be the acting was everything because that's really all I wanted to do. And so it was the most rewarding and the most challenging. Um, and then as things moved along and I got into my own shows, um, the producing part of it, managing it all, you know, really pretty much doing what all of you are doing, um, getting things done on time and, and technically right and uh, managing a lot of people. Um, and then I got a little bit better at that. And uh, so now it's, it's, you know, the thing that's most rewarding for me at the end of the day is putting a show together and seeing it come together. I, 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 there's, I'm exhausted, but I love seeing it happen. Um, but the directing part of it's kind of fun too. It's still new to me, but there's something about um, creating pictures in your mind and seeing them come out on screen telling a story. There's something really fun about that. Sounds to me like it's hard to pick a favorite. Um, acting is probably the hardest thing for me at this point, only because it's the last thing on my to-do list. Um, you know, even when I'm getting in hair and makeup and all of that, and I go back and I sit in front of the monitor and then it's, oh, now it's my turn. And that's the thing that Hillary and I would do. I'm like, go put on your actor's hat. I'll put on, and it's hard because you're, you're sitting there thinking about cameras and, and things like that. I, I, I find that difficult. Uh, they kind of already addressed it earlier. I asked about uh, with you and Hillary, it seemed like you team direct a lot, but um, if you like it, if you do it more as a team or if you do individual, I think you kind of said you each take a set type thing. Do you prefer the team direct approach or do you prefer the individual approach? I'm sure the team direct speeds things up when you're trying to shoot. Hillary and I, like, we're, we're super um, in tune with each other, so it's fun to work together like that. Because like I said, she's got strengths that I don't have. And I think I, I have strengths that, that, you know, work together with her well. And, um, you know, we just, we see different things. So it, it works together and we're, we're not, it's not a competitive thing. We're, it, in fact, we have a really good time. So um, it's one of my favorite things to do is, is to produce and direct with her because we, we get our own little room. And then after the end of the day, we go have our cocktail and then we just, we, and we laugh and we, we usually pee our pants and that's <laughs> kind of a good day on set when you can pee your pants with your best friend. What, um, other than yourself and Hillary, what um, wonderful treats will It Girls on the Stoop season three bring? You know, we, we tried something different in, in season two because people were writing us saying, you know, I don't drink and I just, I love the recipes. And, and I thought, well, what do we do with this? So we did a little more exercise and helpful, healthy hints and stuff like that, which is really cool. But I think we're going to go back to just, you know, being booze hounds and confessional and, and making some really interesting recipes. It's all going to be done virtually. So we're going to have our friends from daytime come in and, and like all cook the same things to see how they turn out. And, um, uh, or add different recipes. It's, it's, uh, but mostly it's going to be cooking drinking and confessionals, which can get really kind of crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think people just need to kind of relax and kick back and we will be taking drink recipe tips like we did in season one. And um, who knows, maybe we can have, you know, like you come on and cook with us. Could be fun. So happy to be here. I apologize for my um, appearance, but you know, I'm out in the woods, so I'm kind of, you know, <laughs> just kind of a woodsy girl right now. Beautiful. Do you smell too? Are you gamey? I am a little game, a little goaty, as I like to call it. Just Ooh. a little. <laughs> Where's my girl? Where's my crystal? Can you see? <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Did you entertain them all while I was coming to you? Well, this one over here, not at all. He was like snoring. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> God, it looks like you're having good weather out there. It's 71 and sunny and it's it's really pretty. I'll just shut up. Oh God, I should take a picture of the clouds. The, the, it's the weirdest front that's been coming through. It's just bizarre. Anyway. Jeez. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi Hillary, thanks for coming today. It is lovely to have you here. It's really lovely to be here. Thank you very much. I apologize for not being beautified. But, you know, I leave that to Crystal. She's the beauty of the group. Hillary, how have you been holding up uh, during the whole self-quarantining thing? 
<laughs> How do I look? <laughs> you look great. Um, whole, with a, with a, you know, with a, um, by the skin of my teeth, pretty good. It's good. We've got all the kids here, and that includes a new puppy that my son brought. So um, I think that uh, Reggie should be showing up every now and then because he's kind of turning into my little shadow. Um, it's good. It's really, really good. We're, we're um, kind of quarantining here up in Maine, and we have a nice little pod group of cousins that we quarantine with. And if anyone leaves the neck, um, you know, we all kind of mask up and glove up and um, sanitize. Yeah. And then we come back and we're, gonna, we're kind of safe with each other. It's nice. Good. Maine is doing pretty well. Maine's doing very well, unlike Florida, where we fled from because they weren't doing well at all. Mm. Um, we'd asked Crystal when, when um, earlier on, uh, were you a fan of, of daytime dramas before you got into them? And, and which were, would you call, were, were your shows, if so? Oh, my God. I watched All My Children from the day of its inception. I mean, I was so hooked on whether little Philip would find out that, uh, what's her face, Rosemary Prince was his mother. I was just completely hooked on that. And I don't know whether you remember the opening, but it used to be a book opening up. It was All My Children starring sure. Rosemary Prince. Yeah. It was, um, it was quite incredible. And so, uh, yeah, and I, I did my classes in, in high school around them, around that show. So, so, yeah, I was a big fan. And that's all I wanted to do. I, I only wanted to do a soap opera during the day and do my theater at night and live in New York. And I was going to be really happy with that. Did you get to meet Rosemary when she came on to As World Turns? No. When did she come on? Like for I Bob and came... Kim's wedding. It was in and out. It was really sporadic. Yeah, I don't think I ever. I, why was she I, I, on all? I, you know what? I, no, I don't think I yeah. ever did. Okay. Because I left there in 89, 90, 89. Yeah. Yeah, 89. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think Penny was before a lot of our times. That's who she played. Oh, that's who she played? Um, as well turned. Yeah. yeah, that was way before my time. Hi, Reggie. Yeah. That was before, that was definitely before my time. But I don't know, Crystal and I always talked about that. We're just big lovers of the genre. Sure. I mean, we just really believe that good storytelling is good storytelling and, and it should be compelling and, um, and everyone needs a good story. But how, how have you seen the storytelling in the, um, in, in the web serial world um, change or stay the same over the last decade? Um, well, um, personally, what we were doing was we were catering to a broader, more diversified audience, and I like that. Um, I felt that there was a huge market of people that weren't um, being catered to except for, you know, through specifics. And I think that's what Crystal brought to the web world was a very diversified story. And, and, and it hit a, a much more diversified audience that was so ready to have the, those stories being told with people like them. You know, I'm talking about the gay community, the black community, the Hispanic community, you know, what do they call them? The BIPOCs, the, uh, you know, black, indigenous, color, pe you know, people of color, BIPOCs, BIPOCs, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I, I, I shouldn't plug another show, but I have to compliment um, The Locker Room. I, th I saw the episode with uh, Greg and yourself and Scott. I thought it was just fantastic. Oh, that was a love fest. We really, you know, it was just a big old love fest. We had such a nice time seeing each other. And, and I, you know, we've gotten to work with Scott on Beacon Hill. So that's yes. been really fun. I've gotten to play, you know, play with him. And, yeah. and um, but I haven't really had a chance to work with Greg. I, you know, begged him to try and try to get him on One Life to Live. But I think I told that story. Well, and I, yeah, he, he told me that when I was, I did an article on him a long time ago. And he said he got a message on your, on his answering machine. And it said, Thomas Christopher Hughes, you must come to New York and play with us. And he, he just couldn't do it. Yeah. I know. But I tried. <laughs> <laughs>
And thank always you for that. trying. Yeah. Always trying. I think I tried to get him on Venice. Didn't I try and pitch him on Venice, Crystal? I think so. I don't know what became of that. Were we drinking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Were we breathing? Um, <laughs> probably, but it seemed like a really good idea. <laughs> Drink yeah. or no drink, it seemed like a really good idea. <laughs> really good. Um, Crystal was tell telling us about how you both direct and how you have a, um, uh, what, what would you, how would you describe your strengths in, in terms of directing? Oh, uh, it's very funny because um, I, I'm much more of a technical mind. Right. I see things technically. I see things how they cut together. I see things um, as we're doing that. And um, uh, Crystal is much more of the emotional story and how um, the story plays puts together. And she's really good with working with the actors. Um, I think we complement each other that way, but I've learned a lot from Crystal think that was, I had more of a learning curve than Crystal did. Would you agree? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I mean, I think, because you see things I don't see, and I don't know if that's just, you know, the way the brain works. Um, I can't get off, the, move my focus from watching the actors. So I, I so appreciate having somebody who can see uh, what's going on in the frame um, beyond the actors. So I, I don't know that I can do what you do. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I think we, we, we certainly yin and yang really well yeah. and, and, and it, and it really helps. Um, and, and it also helps to know, like, especially with Crystal, because she's so important in the stories, uh, that we tell, um, to know what she's comfortable with, what her feelings are, lighting and things like that. And once once I learned all of that, then I was a much better um, producer, director on the scenes that she was in front of the camera. I think I could, because um, you really you really spend as much as, as we're rushing to get things done because time is money and we're trying to be very concise. Um, you also want to make sure it looks good and that everyone feels good so that they're looking good, they're feeling good, and therefore they're gonna be free in their acting. So that was, uh, you know, that was kind of a, an interesting thing to learn. I love being on the other side of the camera. Um, as you can tell, hair and makeup is not something that I race into every day of my life. So um, I really enjoy kind of getting up and just, you know, going to work and not having to um, beautify. <laughs> I think Crystal and I, there were some points when we were both in the makeup chair looking at each other going, oh my God, really? We have to do this again? <laughs> it's true. That means we might not see you back bringing yeah, but... to Port Charles, which is such a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Port Charles is, I think Port, Port Charles is on lockdown, aren't they? Aren't they on a COVID lockdown? Uh, they're taping back, I think, up last week. They'll be back with new episodes on Monday. They will? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Good for them. Um, no, I think they've got their hands full probably trying to tell the stories with the people that they have. Uh, I don't think that they need to. Um, and I think I was brought on mostly as a stopgap to, oh, God, we need a little help here. Um, this character is missing or we need uh, to tell the story from this direction. Um, let's call Nora. So I, I think that that's uh, mostly what I was kind of used for it was fun I had a good time well it's fun for us too because we can pretend it, it let us pretend that land is still happening and Nora's still married to Bo and and they're picking up something at Rody's so. and, and, and it is and, and they are and they they it is they are, you know yes I mean it's all taking place off camera it's great that the network has the rights to the characters back and I agree it would be great I think it would be great to see you on doing more and so when you do come on for these appearances, you know, it's like the glass is like, we, we see it half full and we think, great, let's build on this. Somebody, you know, yeah. commit a crime again, fast. Um, um, but yeah, are, are you in touch with, um, with uh, Woodsy? I am, I'm in touch with Woodsy and I just did a little 
thing with Catherine Hicklin, as a matter of fact, who I hadn't seen or talked to in years. Uh, I mean, we text each other, but we've never gotten on the phone or talked. And so we did a little Zoom thing, which was really fun. Hadn't seen her. Um, now I just, you know, uh, and I talked to Woodsy, you know, touch base with him, figuring out what he's doing. His, he's so funny. Um, and Cassie DePaiva, and of course, Crystal. Stay in touch with Crystal. Speaking of funny, it was so hilarious on that One Life to Live fantasy episode where you played Lindsay and Catherine played Nora, <laughs> and you put like the fake tears, like, because she was always crying getting men's sympathy that way. And I hadn't realized just how much she was doing that until you spoofed it. I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Well, we had a good time spoofing each other, that's for sure. That's for sure. It and Aunt Crystal, you left the show too early. You shouldn't have gotten shot out of that cannon as fast as you did. I was so yeah. excited to get to juggling school. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, when Gary came on, you know, we really got to have a little bit of fun and not so, oh my God, not so um, intense with the... Uh, juggling and the whale watching that was going on. Well, I missed that. <clears throat> I'm glad you enjoyed your whale watch. Yeah, I, I didn't have to. That was your brother. Wasn't that your brother with Gina Tonioni? Didn't they go whale watching? Wasn't that their big date? Hillary, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of our, our uh, fans here wanted me to ask you if you keep in touch with any of your as the world turns. <laughs> Uh, co-stars. Yes, I do. Um, Scott Bryce and Greg Marks, I stay in touch with. Um, I lost touch with um, Scotty Holmes. He, I think, has moved to the Carolinas and he's doing, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to shut. We're having a really weird storm here right now. Um, it's just pouring and blowing and the sun is out. So it's very bizarre. Um, uh, who else do I stay in touch with? Crystal, who else do I stay in touch with? Um, have you said Cassie? Cassie. No, that's One Life to Live. She's oh. not, she wasn't As the World Turns. But okay. I knew her when she was on Guiding Light, so. Yeah. Um, Me too. Yeah. Um, I also have another question for myself. We were talking earlier uh, in that, uh, do we follow people from one show to, so it starts from one show to another? And you are actually the reason why I started watching As the World Turns. I loved you on The Doctors. And I've always oh, wanted wow. to ask you about a certain moment, and I know who remembers anything, but it was so freaking brilliant. And I wanted to know if you improvised it, if you remember this at all, but it was a big scene. Um, you're about to be, uh, you were with your love interest at the time, and he was like, close your eyes and you close your eyes and he says, stick out your hand and you did with your oh. ring finger, which was, I thought, utterly brilliant. And I didn't know if that, I was always wondering, did you, was that scripted or did you just kind of have fun? No, I, I have a feeling that was me. Was that on The Doctors or was that on One Life to Live? No, that was The Doctors. The Doctors, it was with Mike. Yep. Mike Powers. Yes. And we were, tr we were up in the cabin I played I kit. You were in the cafeteria, but I could be wrong. Oh, was I in the cafeteria? Oh, well, yes. you know, more power to me. I remember my childhood, but this I remember. What? Don't ask. Well, my God, that was my childhood too. <laughs> you're much younger than me, so. <laughs> you must have been a little tyke. What is, it about this, <laughs> what is it about this genre that, that a fan, I can remember the most, um, minuscule or, or unique things that I've seen yeah. uh, an actor do, and then I can ask them about it. Um, and, and what is it about the daytime genre that, that I, I don't think that's an uncommon thing. Can you speak to the connection that the viewers have with the characters that they don't really seem to have in, in other genres as, as intimately? Well, I, I don't know um, about Crystal's experience, but um, I used to get um, mail from this woman who said she liked me better than her daughter because I came to see her every day. And I think that was basically it. We were in their house and in their life. 
for an hour every day. That's, that's a lot. You, that's a lot of hours in a lifetime to be in someone's life. And um, I know with Bo and Nora, they took on a whole, you know, super couple status because the audience went on dates with them. Mm -hmm. They, they, they followed us on dates. They went through our first kiss. They went through the, oh my God, let's wait. It's going too fast. And, and they were always rooting for us. And I think that's the key to a successful relationship. Like with Gina and Annie, it's, it, it's the rooting value. That's the rooting value. And you always want to keep that in mind. They're who you root for. Who are we rooting and, for? And, yeah. It's who are we rooting for? And, and then I think that's also where soaps kind of lost it also is because they, I know the bad guys are really fun to write, but when the bad guys become the total rooting factor, you kind of make a mockery out of the good guys. And then you've skewed what's good and what's evil. And, and I think the core of good storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. Nailed it. J just one more thing before um, that I, I wanted to say. Um, the scenes you won the Emmy for where you were doing the, the summation at the rape trial, um, as that story was progressing, did you know that Nora was going to have that uh, epiphany and realize that her clients were guilty and that she'd be placed in a moral and legal dilemma as to whether or not to continue to um, represent them and and that was just such an awesome memorable moment i thought you were off the charts that's what got me home well thank you um actually that was really interesting because um when they pitched you know back in the day you used to be uh, and crystal can speak to this on days i don't know whether she had the same experience that i did but back in those days um, a lot of times they came to you and told you what the story was and what your arc was. And it was a dialogue and it wasn't a surprise. <laughs> you know, you didn't open up the script and it was a surprise. They actually kind of pitched you the story and where your character was going to be going. And I remember them telling me um, uh, that I was going to be representing um, the rapists. And I got scared because I thought if I defend them then i'm a bad guy and i just and, and they don't last long on soap so okay but that's i mean i at that point they didn't um so i kind of said well do i know that they're guilty and she said well you're doing your job and so i asked i said can we just have a moment after the trial where she is she finds out that they're guilty and then you see what that's done to her that she really defended them wholeheartedly because she believed in their innocence and then it's afterwards that she you know let, let's see that and then they ran with it michael malone who was just this brilliant writer he had me find out prior to the summation that they were guilty and so I had these scenes where I tried to get them to confess on the stand and I, you know, was doing everything I could. And then it affected Bo and Nora because Sarah had been raped and he, his feeling was you can't defend them. And I had to say, you know, no, everyone deserves a, a, a fair trial and it should be up to justice. And so it changed everything. And then when, so we were building up to this big moment, you know, in the summation, and when it came, it was just this little paragraph. And I was like, what, are you kidding me? We've just built six weeks into this trial and it's down to a single paragraph. So I went to Michael and I said, you write these beautiful summations in your books. Where's the summation here? So he did, he, he sat down and rewrote it. It was, it was pretty cool. Effing, effing awesome. awesome. Thank you so much for taking time and spending an hour with us and Crystal and Hillary. Um, I hope you guys will come back for other firesides, but again, this is what we do. We hang out with the stars and we chat with you guys, learn more about everything that we, all the burning questions that we want to ask really. And um, it was an awesome day today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, and job. here's, Thank you can you. unmute everyone. Let's give yep. them a really big goodbye. We're all going to have this <laughs> big round of applause. Bye.
<laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you all thank for you coming. Thank you for hanging out with us for the hour. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful yes. day. Yes, bye.